Hi everyone and welcome to Press X, the Geek Show Podcast Network's dedicated thing about video games, because we're not sure what we are. What are we, Mark? I'm pretty sure that we are a thing about video games. Okay, that was Mark. We don't have an Andy because he's on holiday. I am Rob and I've been playing Space Hulk Deathwing, which is uh, <laughs> surprisingly fun and terrifying at the same time. Especially when the uh, monsters jump out from underground and start attacking you in in waves, uh, and you've only got like a three man team. One of them is a medic. I've also been playing Italia Liddy and Suel, or Italia Suel and Liddy, the alchemists and the mysterious paintings, because I'm a terminal fan of the franchise. Don't judge me. <laughs> I can't judge you because I've been playing the weeb trash as well. Italia is not weeb trash. <laughs> It's it's cute girls doing things, isn't it? Well, kind of, but it's mainly a crafting game, and I'm just the terminal crafter. I've been playing a few different things. Uh, I've been more on the uh, the indie side of things. Uh, first thing I played was Dragon's Cliff, which is kind of like the crafting thing, in which you kind of run your own little your own little RPG town. Dragon's and Cliff. You've... Yeah. Why does that name sound familiar? I have no idea. Uh, do you know what it is? I, I, I thought it, it sounded familiar when I when I saw it as well. Um, but it's 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 quite interesting. It's in early access. I still I still believe, and it's got a lot of polish needed to it. But it's you build your own little RP, well, you don't even build it. You kind of run your own, own little uh, RPG town. You've got to cre- get your blacksmiths to create weapons and send out your teams to vanquish monsters RPG style, and it's uh, it's pretty addicting. Apart from that, I've been on the uh, the weeb trash with uh, Girls and Panzer uh, Dream Tank Battle, which is surprisingly good for a uh, an anime based Namco Bandai game. Because, as you probably remember, I wasn't uh, very impressed with the the uh, the Gundam title last year. Oh, Gundam versus. Yeah, I wasn't that impressed by it, but this has kind of uh, made things a bit better now. Yeah. The Gundam games have always been a bit of an odd duck when you get right down to it, because there's only a certain number of ways that you can actually do a Gundam game. Exactly. Well, it's a, it's the same with a lot of these anime series. I mean, you kind of have a, a, a fighting game, or you've got a like a Musou type game, and unless it's something else, like maybe like you could probably get a cooking game out of a Food Wars title, but uh, a cooking Gundam game. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, that's the thing. With Gunpla being such a big thing, I would have thought that uh, the biggest selling games would be games where you make a Gundam. Yeah, I mean, there is a new one coming out. Can you make a Gundam in that? Can you design your own Gundam? I I, I believe you can make your own Gundam. It's interesting that we talk about making stuff because it does kind of lead us into what we're going to be what we're talking about today, which is E three. E three hasn't happened yet. We can't tell the future. We haven't looked into the future and we're telling you everything that's going to happen in E3. These are just things that we hope will happen, right? Yeah, it's, this is this is our E3 predictions and wish list. Yeah. And I want to start off by getting it out of the way. I want Mother 3. I've well, been asking you already for Mother have... 3 for the last 12 years and we still haven't got it. Do your parents know about this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, dear. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll get that out of the way because everyone's expecting it to, to pop up at some point. So now we can continue on with the rest of the E3 stuff. Yes. <laughs> As I said, we were talking about making stuff. And one of the things that I did want to mention is uh, Media Molecule. Because uh, have you seen their trailer for Dreams? That's for the um, PS4, isn't it? Yeah. It's basically what would happen if you took Little Big Planet, they made a fortune with Little Big Planet, and although Tearaway wasn't as big a hit as Little Big Planet, Dreams is basically Little Big Planet that has finally matured and grown up. And I reckon Dreams is going to be another runaway hit for Media Molecule. I reckon that a lot of people are going to fall in love with that game because the aesthetic, it's got a beautiful aesthetic. And the game has a story mode that uh, actually looks great, but it also lets people design their own levels, and some of the levels that they had on the trailer that you can design yourself just look phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I've, I was very interested by it. 
Um, it looks beautiful. Yeah. It- and I really think that, I mean, for me, that is probably the one out of what Sony has is the thing that's kind of interesting me the most. Uh, I think that can, there's a lot of good potential with it. My only concern is that in the past, hmm. I would probably say PS1, PS2 era, Sony seemed to do really well with their kind of like arty platformers and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, the hard success with Little Big Planet, but apart from that, everything onwards has kind of just been a kind of lukewarm reception. I don't know. I don't know if Sony's well, kind of. Know. Those weren't Sony, those were third parties, because Mean Your Molecule is the one that made Little Big Planet. Yeah. They used to be based around here, remember? Um, exactly, yeah. I think they might might still be based around here. But the thing is, uh, you had other games. Ubisoft did uh, did that war one, remember? Yeah. Um, and then there were Ubisoft also did Child of Light. You had uh, all sorts of other things like season af- Seasons After Fall. Stuff like that. So the stuff that's coming from Sony themselves, that's quite limited in taste. The stuff that's coming from third parties, I'd say, is the stuff that we should really be paying attention to. It might be published by Sony, but it's not developed by them. But I mean, oh yeah, I mean, I, I was just thinking like back in like PS2 era, we had Jack and Daxter, we had Ratchet and Clank, we had Sly Cooper, mm. we had a few others, but now it's just kind of we had Knack. Yeah, I mean, when it comes <laughs> to when it comes to more traditional games, like platform games, stuff like that, I think Sony's fumbled a little bit. This year, it's pretty much been confirmed that we're not going to get any announcements on whatever the next console is going to be, because they haven't even said it's going to be called a PlayStation 5 or anything like that. They've just said it's in development. Yeah. So there's not going to be any announcements about that. I reckon we'll probably find out a bit more about Death Stranding. I really want to say something about Death Stranding because I'm I'm sorry I'm finding it harder and harder to actually care about it because it's been two maybe three years and we still haven't really seen anything except some bizarre trailers. Do you remember we were talking about Death Stranding on Keyframe? I think it was before, and we said Death Stranding is basically just based on those two trailers. It's basically Guillermo del Toro and. Hideo Kojima went out on a night out, got really, really wasted, ran into Mads Mikkelsen and Norman Reedus, and then the four of them just continued drinking, and then about three o'clock in the morning, Kojima says, I've got a brilliant idea for a game. Norman, there's you, right, and then there's this this beach, right, and it's all black, and there's dead fish everywhere, and you're naked, Norman, you're naked, <laughs> and there's a baby, but then the baby disappears, but you see the feet, and then there's things in the sky, Norman, what are the things in the sky, Norman, what are they, and then, Mads, you're in a sewer, and there's another baby, and I don't know why the baby's there. And Guillermo del Toro's going, you know, that's a brilliant idea, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a film out of it. <laughs> it's, it's, it is. I mean, it sounds absolutely insane, but it's like, I just find it very hard to care about because we haven't seen any gameplay or anything. I really hope this time they do because if not, then if the PS5 is starting development, it's kind of like, will this be something that ends up getting delayed? Because um, yeah, the Last Guardian was shown a long time before it was released. Yeah, and. This is going to be, I'm bringing up another one that Sony um, bragged about a few years ago. Final Fantasy VII, the remake. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, that's down to Square, though, because, uh, you know, we'd have to approach Square and find out what the hell's going on with that. And I reckon they probably are waiting for the next gen consoles or to see whether PC technology is going to basically hammer everything into the ground as it's been doing the last few years. Um, yeah. With Sony's, I reckon it's going to be very, very basic. It's just going to be more stuff about stuff that we know. Stuff like Spider-Man, Last of Us, Part 2, Ghost of... T- Ghost of... T- Ugh, let me say this correctly. Ghost of Tsushima, Days Gone, stuff like that. Yeah, Days Gone, I really want to see something more interesting because I was sat there, look, when I was watching the trailer for it, I was just like, this is just another Uncharted, with, only with zombies. And I was just like, hang on, Uncharted with zombies was Last of Us 2. Yeah. It, and it's like, between 
that Last of Us 2 and Horizon Zero Dawn, which I'm expecting them to see, they're going to announce a Horizon Second Dawn mm. and God of War. I just feel like Sony's just been pumping out the same game only with a skin swap. Yeah. Sony don't really have much to announce this year, I reckon. And they've got some timed exclusives, stuff like Red Dead Redemption 2, Destiny 2, Cod Blops 4. Yeah. Um, um, I want to see, with, with, a few years ago we saw a reboot of Ratchet and Clank. Mm. We saw a reboot of God of War recently. We know that Medieval is supposed to be getting a new... I don't know if it's a remake or a reboot. I reckon they might have another reboot of an older IP. Oh. I'm expecting it to be Jack and Daxter, because I noticed they have... They did kind of, like, release the Jack and Daxter trilogy almost silently onto the PS4. Yeah, they did, didn't they? But I kind of really, really hoping that it's actually Ape Escape. <laughs> I reckon it's going to be Jack and Daxter, because uh, I don't reckon it'll be Ape Escape. I reckon if anyone's going to do Ape Escape, it'll probably be Nintendo. Which conveniently leads us on to uh, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Microsoft, I have no idea what Microsoft's doing. It's like, I've got notes of stuff that they've got, they've got. And I'm just like, well, we said the other day there wasn't a new Halo for a while. Well, um, I mean, that- they reckon they're going to announce Halo 6, though. Yeah. This is the thing that confused me. First they say there's not going to be another Halo for a while, and then they say, oh, right, we might actually announce Halo 6 at E3. We're not sure yet. Exactly. Um, There'll be a new Forza. There's always a new Forza. One thing that I think we can treat as money in the bank, is going to be a new Blue Dragon? (laughs) No. (laughs) Now, I know people aren't big fans of Blue Dragon, the video game, and... There are far fewer fans of Blue Dragon, the anime as well. Um, but Blue Dragon, the video game, I- I'll say it's all right as a JRPG. Oh, yeah. As long a, as you take it with a pinch of salt and you don't expect too much from it and you're okay with, you know, some particularly shoddy <laughs> controls. Yeah, it's it's one of those titles that was kind of like okay, but there wasn't anything... It was. To it be was, honest, I, I think I think it got a lot of the attention. It did because it was like one of like five GRPGs on the on the the Xbox three hundred and sixty. Yeah, was the Xbox three hundred and sixty. But I mean, uh, look at what it was up against. It had Lost Odyssey, which is a Square Enix thing. Infinite Undiscovery, which was another Square Enix thing. Star Ocean, which again was another Square Enix thing. Another Star Ocean, which was also a Square Enix thing. Eternal Sonata which was a really interesting JRPG. That was a really good one. That was, was, that, on the, was that actually on the 360? Wasn't yeah, it? it was on the 360 and on the uh, PS3. I've got both versions. Uh, there was another one, um, Tales of Vesperia, which um, has been leaked, apparently. Apparently there's going to be a 10th anniversary remake of that. So. Yeah. Whether or not... I, I can't imagine that going on the Xbox. I think that's going to be a, a rare Sony switched kind of deal. Yeah, and when I find who stole my copy of Tales of Vesperia, you can be guaranteed they will have certain parts removed. If they haven't been already, we are a open society now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, according to what I've found, though, I've discovered apparently Platinum Games has something in the works for Xbox... Oh, now that's interesting because I know Platinum Games are making Bayonetta free. Yeah, but Scalebound um, got cancelled. And they've hinted towards Wonderful One Hundred and One yeah. as well. But the thing is, Scalebound got cancelled, didn't it? Yeah. And this is the thing. You remember Castlevania: Lord of Shadows? Yeah. Remember when that came out originally, and we saw the trailer, and it wasn't called Castlevania: Lord of Shadows. Hmm. It was just called Lord of Shadows or something else like that. And it wasn't attached to Castlevania in any way. Yeah. What I'm thinking is, what if they've done that with this? What if Scalebound has effectively been cancelled? You can add the air quotes however you want there. You know, maybe sidewards if you're gangster. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's what they mean by cancelled and Scalebound has just basically, they've gone back, they're going to change some things reskin bits of it, and it's going to be a totally new game that's part of a different franchise. I hope so, because I really don't want Scalebound to go to waste. Because that, to be honest, I don't have an Xbox One, and that would have made me buy an Xbox One. 
Well, what would make me buy an Xbox One is the fact that it's getting fifty dollars knocked off it. Yeah, but it needs more. For me, it needs more unique games. Well, let's get I the feel it, well, if you've got a, if you've got a PlayStation, unless you really really love Halo or Forza or the handful of other exclusives, mm. there's uh, not it, much. It may be getting a streaming service this year. They may announce it this year, and they've got the Xbox One X, which it it can easily handle a streaming service now. Oh, easily. One of the more interesting ones I've heard rumored is um, again an old IP, which was a very successful title on the N64. You're talking about Perfect Dark, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, I've heard a few people uh, saying that that's the next one. Not made by Rare, because Rare's kind of doing the own little thing with that Sea of Thieves now. Uh, but yeah, I've heard people saying about Perfect Dark. So to me, if they get a Perfect Dark that feels as good as the original one did, which... Let's face it, hasn't aged well, but... Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, they did Perfect Dark Zero on the Xbox 360, which wasn't that good. Yeah, and that was a launch title as well, so it's like, it's been yeah. a long time since we've seen it, and I think they could do well with a Perfect Dark one. I mean, Joanna Dark's a decent uh, character that they can use to sell units, I would say. It's a shame that she's kind of just been abandoned. Uh... See, there was a franchise... Well, there was a game that... Uh... I really wanted them to bring back. I'm hoping they bring back Siphon Filter on the PlayStation. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, a new Siphon Filter game. I would love that uh, because Siphon Filter were. I mean, loads of people were into Metal Gear Solid and stuff, or Metal Gear in general. But Siphon Filter was one of those games where it was so much more immersive in terms of the game itself. Not in terms of the actual, you know, the cutscenes and the storyline and stuff like that. Metal Gear Solid was beating Seinfeld Filter on that side. But in terms of the actual game itself, playing the game, Siphon Filter had a lot to it, and I think in some ki- in some ways it was better than Metal Gear. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those games that I played a little bit when I was younger and didn't play again, but I always wish I did play a little bit more. The thing is, Siphon Filter had to have something going for it. It got three games on the PlayStation 1, then it got uh, Dark Mirror on the PlayStation 2, didn't it? Yeah, and also on the PSP. So yeah, it's 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 been dormant for quite some time. Siphon Filter, I'd love to see on the PlayStation Four, but the other game that I was talking about is uh, you might remember this. No one lives forever. Oh yeah, that was um, on the PS Two. Yes. Yeah, PS Two. Yeah, that that would be a decent one. Yeah, um, that would, that'd be an interesting one to bring back. Anyway, um, we have been talking about Perfect Dark, which was on the N64, which conveniently leads us to Ubisoft. Um, no, <laughs> Nintendo. I've been. I'm trying to avoid talking about Nintendo because really they bore me. Um, but I'll uh, oh, see. So for me, Nintendo's the big one. See, yeah, I know. <laughs> so we'll cause... get some Nintendo in because <laughs> they've got quite a lot of uh, stuff because it's Nintendo. Well, and Nintendo seem to be a lot more easier to predict than the others. <laughs> okay, there's going to be something to do with Super Smash Brothers. This is just me listing things that I think are going to happen at Nintendo, right? Something oh, to do with Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers, Smash Brothers we know is going to be there. So. Right. Something to do with Metroid. Something to do with Mario. Something to do with Pokemon. Possibly something to do with uh, Star Fox. Maybe a racing game of some sort. Um, yeah. There will be something to do with Animal Crossing because generally these days Nintendo are doing stuff with that year on year. Maybe a new punch out? I don't know. I'm going to put out, uh, like I said, new Animal Crossing. Uh, I think it's. I think because we didn't get one on the. Well, didn't get a real one on the Wii U. Well, the one that um, you <laughs> said. Yeah, the one that I you think... said, Mother 3. Me, I'm going with Earthbound 2. That is Mother 3. <laughs> Basically, I know. Um, I mean, in terms of the title, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I hope because they keep saying every year it's going to come back, and every year people leak that it's it's there and it's waiting. It's supposed to be a Switch launch title, but it never comes out. So I think eventually they will. I kind of hope that they'll just bung all three into yeah. a bundle or something, and then well, put them all in like a. The set. reason I'm the reason I'm thinking they'll go with the title of Earthbound Two rather than Mother Three is because. Earthbound 2, people will go, oh, Earthbound, I need to find the first Earthbound game. With Mother 3, they'll go, um... Yeah, because they did, they did rename um, 
the original Mother game as Earthbound Zero. So yeah, I yeah. can say that. Do you see what I mean? Um, the other ones, I think Pikmin 4. We know Pikmin 4 is coming. It's been coming for a while. Um, a new Fire Emblem. That was announced at the beginning of last year before the Switch was coming. I'm um, not sure. It, I reckon we'll probably get a trailer for the new Fire Emblem. But I don't think yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see something. I think yeah. they'll they'll give us something for it. But I think that uh, I think that because I mean it's only in uh, was it this year or towards the end of last year when they did the mobile game for Fire Emblem? Oh, that's coming up to two years ago now. Is it two years ago? Um, yeah, has it been that long? Wow, uh, it might have been beginning of last year. So it's well over a year yeah, now. It's well over a year, but uh, that's been doing amazingly well. Yeah, it didn't stop them from releasing um, Echoes and the Warriors one, though, did it? Well, the speaking Warriors of, one was... Speaking of Warriors, yeah. I, I do expect another crossover with a Koei Tecmo. Yeah, and do you know where it's going to be? Mario. No. Nope. What do you reckon it'll be? I reckon it'll be Super Smash Bros. Warriors. I reckon if they're going to do it, they'll go yeah, with Smash possibly. Brothers and they'll, they'll actually do it as a Warriors game. Think about it like this. They've done... Warriors All-Stars, Koei Tecmo have done Warriors All-Stars, so they've proven that they can take multiple characters from multiple franchises and put them all in one game and make it work. Yeah. I reckon that uh, if they are going to do a Musou game with Nintendo properties, then it'll probably be a Super Smash Brothers. And if they're smart about it, they will call it Super Smash Warriors. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think that's what they need to call it. Yeah. Um. Personally, I want a new Paper Mario, but I want a proper Paper Mario. And what, a Mario that you make out of paper? Well, originally on the N64... If you want a Mario that you make out of paper, I can help you with that. (laughs) Originally on the N64, there was a title called Paper Mario, and then there was Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, and they were both like JRPGs. Yeah. And then they kind of just made more, but they kind of, as it went on... They weren't as good. They weren't as good. good. I just want to run back to the original. Or if they can't, don't want to make a new one, just port it over the old ones. Um, The other one I'm interested in, which is also on PS4, is Dragon Quest XI. Yes. Now, we know that there's supposed to be a Switch version of the game, but we haven't seen anything for it. Mm. So whether or not they're doing something interesting, we don't know. Yeah. Um, Also, Square Enix have apparently announced that there's a Switch-focused division. So I'm expecting, because Octopath Travel is more or less complete now. Yeah, that's, so maybe, that's maybe maybe bravely default free, possibly. But I think they've got other things in the works. Square Enix have got like the Avengers, Kingdom Hearts three needs finishing. More people are waiting for that than are waiting for bravely default. Just cause four. And well, Shadow Square of... Enix have announced today that they do have at least two divisions focused exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, so, the thing is, Square Enix have how many divisions? Many, many divisions. Exactly. So saying that they have two divisions focused on Nintendo stuff is kind of like Microsoft saying, yes, yes, we have a, a couple of teams of tech support people working on solving Windows 8 problems, given yeah. how big Microsoft <laughs> is as a company. Two teams of ten. Anyway, Speaking so like, we'll go in yeah. square, straight to Square Enix. Kingdom the, Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts Honestly, 3. You know what it is? I loved Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, but the series was put, they put out that many spin-offs, they made the story that ridiculous and confusing. I honestly don't care about 3 anymore. I'll be honest, I'm the same. Do you know what I'm looking forward to? I'm looking forward to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yes. Right? That, I, I saw like a picture of that today and it was just like, it looks amazing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And I am looking forward to Just Cause 4. Because Just Cause 3 was so much fun. It was. I, I, I've just caused two was like a game I played, bought on like a budget, and I absolutely adored it. But yeah, the third one was just so much. It's so just, much better. It's just okay. Uh, I mean, somebody at Square Enix had this smart idea. What would happen if we would made it like Grand Theft Auto, but basically you could do anything, and you had a parachute attached to you all of the time. So you can go base jumping anywhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I think Square hinted, I think there's something was leaked about uh, Hitman 2. There's uh, very few details about that. They reckon, because Hitman was a runaway success. 
Yeah. You know, so many people were uh, were into the new version of Hitman. So many people enjoyed it. Konami's game output is virtually non-existent at the moment. So Square and Capcom and uh, the rest of them, they have a chance to really take, I mean, Square in particular, because uh, they've really got no competition coming over from Japan, except for NIS America and Atlas. Bandai Namco, sorry, that's their main competitor now. Bandai Namco, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say, I mean, Konami actually did hint at a, a new Bomberman thing today as well, which I'm kind to be honest, if I'm betting, I can't imagine there being another new Bomberman game. Yeah. I think the likely thing is Bomberman's in Smash. Yeah, I reckon. I, I don't know if you mentioned Atlas. Yeah. Sega and Atlas, uh, they've announced their floor plans, which is going to be Valkyria Chronicles 4, finally. Yeah. Uh, Yakuza Kiwani 2? Is it Yakuza Kiwani right? 2, which is basically Yakuza 2. Yeah. Uh, really Yakuza Kiw- yeah, Yakuza Kiwami was basically Yakuza, a new version of the original game, and Yakuza Kiwami 2 is Yakuza 2. But the thing is, the early Yakuza games, now, you'll probably remember this as well, Mark, after Shenmue, after we ha- we ended up just not having Shenmue 3, we needed something to kind of fill that hole and the Yakuza games did that very, very well because it's effectively the same development team. Yeah, games I mean, I've only just started Yakuza said. Zero, and that's my first Yakuza game. Oh, but oh. I, I can definitely see it's very much like um, Shenmue. Uh, um, Sonic um, Racing got another announcement, didn't it? Yeah. Um, I, I don't doubt Sega's going to trundle Sonic out again as well because it's we don't have a Sonic game for Christmas yet. Uh, Sonic is for life, not just for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, God, just, we'll have we'll have somebody comment and oh, you really showed Sonic again. <laughs> I'll be honest; I don't think it's worth talking about Activision because we mentioned Cod Blops for, and I mean, aside from that, it's going to be there may be a Destiny announcement, but I really don't care. No, um, new Overwatch skins, maybe. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't care. I don't play Overwatch. Ubisoft. I reckon they're going to do more of the same in that we'll probably get something else about Beyond Good and Evil 2 except for a release date. Maybe we'll get something about Assassin's Creed. It's a good bet because there's always something about Assassin's Creed. I think we'll get Assassin's Creed because they've done a trailer for, was it Odyssey? Assassin's Creed Odyssey? I don't and know. someone's already managed to rework it into a Mario thing. Yeah. I um, reckon the yeah. one that uh, the one that I... I'm hoping for is a new Splinter Cell game. Yeah, a new Splinter Cell would be good. Because uh, it, it's past time. The last Splinter, Splinter Cell game was Blacklist, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's been a long time. I mean, Blacklist did not do well at all. No, it didn't. But it's been a it's been a while. Like you said, Beyond Good and Evil, I would expect them to do a re-release of the first one as well. Hmm. Um, I'm not, I'm just trying to figure out what else Ubisoft. Oh, was it the Division or something they had as well? Yeah, the Division, which I'm not a big fan on, uh, fan of. I'll be honest. No, no, it's yeah. not something that I'm really bothered about. Prince of Persia that could come back. Uh, I don't know. After the travesty of the, uh, that they did with the PS3 version, I still think Ubisoft should apologise to the entire franchise for that PS3 version. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. Speaking, I mean, of, to be honest, Prince of Persia kind of just became Assassin's Creed anyway, didn't yeah, it? It did. Speaking of apologies, right? What's the betting that EA are gonna say sorry? No, I, I think EA will apologize and then they'll, do, they'll 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 do something straight away afterwards. Yeah, I reckon there'll be a well guaranteed. There's going to be a Madden and a FIFA announcement because you can't get away from them. They'll also announce NHL and whatever else. Probably the basketball game. Maybe a UFC game. Sports, we've got it covered. Don't worry. For those of you who don't play sports or sports games, we will cover them when we get them. All right. <laughs> anyway, I reckon Anthem is going to be the big seller for them. Anthem and Battlefield. Battlefields, yeah. I think the Battlefield's going to be one they're going to be hyping up. Yeah. DLC, did the Star Wars Battlefront come out last year, wasn't it? I reckon with stuff like Need for Speed and Battlefront and other things like that, and Mass Effect, they're going to just put to one side and pretend it didn't happen. 
Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's, it, it, it baffles me the way EA works because it's like, I can't understand why they haven't re-released the Mass Effect trilogy or the Dragon Age yeah. titles onto the current consoles. Yeah. Do you know what I am expecting, though? And this is going to make you laugh. Bethesda. I reckon Bethesda is going to do this. They're just going to they're just going to walk on stage, right? It's going to be a guy walks on stage and he's wearing a robe, right? And he's going to open the robe and start windmilling the audience for all he's worth. And as he's windmilling, a beat is going to start. And then just behind him, you'll see Fallout 76 and then you'll see Rage 2. You'll see the next Elder Scrolls and there'll just be this guy, you know, just a developer from Bethesda who's furiously windmilling the audience (laughs) <laughs> and then he'll just close his robe and then walk off and the screen will go black and that'll be it. That'll be Bethesda's thing. Yeah, <laughs> Bethesda, like you said, I mean, I'm interested in Fallout 76, but I kind of need to know more. I mean, I really, really like the Fallout series, but mm. I still have a bad taste in my mouth from Fallout 4, to be honest. The thing that interests me the most about 76 is that in the Please Stand By thing, they shown the Vault Boy puppet which, if people are into Fallout, they know that uh, Vault 77 was the puppet man. Yep. Who was a man who was trapped in a uh, in the, one of the vaults with only a creative puppets. So I'm really hoping that ties into it because that would just be hilarious. Yeah. Um, honestly, apart from that, Bethesda, um, like you said, we've got Rage 2. Mm. Um, we've got Wolfenstein 2 for the Switch. Yeah, Wolfenstein 2 come out for the PS4 yet? I think it did, didn't it? Wolfenstein 2 for the PS4? Yeah, does it, is, that, is that already out? Or is this, yeah, that's is already it? out. That's been out for a while. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure what else. To be honest, I was really expecting um, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas to get current-gen ports as well. Hmm. Whether or not they do. I mean, we got Skyrim put on the Switch just last year, so... We might get a new Elder Scrolls announcement. We don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I reckon at the minimum we'll probably get an Elder Scrolls announcement to go with the MMO. But mm-hmm. I don't know anything aside from that. I couldn't say. I couldn't say. So I think we've more or less covered everybody. Yeah, we've more or less covered everybody. Except for PC, but we'll talk about that afterwards. That's the kind of worms that we don't have the time for at the moment. <laughs> so to finish things off, Rob. Yeah. Free games, any games that they could release your ultimate wish list. What would you have? Oh, that they could announce. You mean or release? Oh, well, announce to see like any dream, like free games. Dream trilogy. It doesn't have to be a trilogy. Just well, dream trilogy as in three games. You know. Yeah. Ooh, now you're asking. Ah, he's putting me on the spot here, folks. Um, hmm, furiously scratching the chin while I think hmm I need more energy to think so I will scratch my head as well as scratch my chin hmm that didn't work damn you damn you for putting me on the spot you go first I need I can't I Uh, I need time right three games I'd love to see a new Suikoden but it has to be Suikoden 6 and do you Konami, pronounce Konami it... have to get the original people yeah. to make it. Do you pronounce it Suikoden or Suikoden? Suikoden, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> See, I pronounce it Suikoden. It's one of those things where it's a... I can't tell how you pronounce it, but it's never a- ever spoken. It's never actually said, so it's like, yeah. you just go, Suikoden, and someone just goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, cause I've always pronounced it Suikoden because uh, there's the Japanese word Suika, which is spelled mm-hmm. S... In English, it would be spelled S-U-I-K-A. Mm-hmm. So I've always pronounced it Suikoden based on that. Yeah, so fair, fair enough. So I would love to see a new one of them. Yeah. Um, another Konami one, uh, a new Mystical Ninja. Mystical the, Ninja. Mystical Ninja starring Goyman. Ah, right, yeah. And uh, finally, I would love to see. See, it's difficult. I would love to see a new proper sequel to Skies of Arcadia. I hate you for choosing one of mine. If not, damn I would you, love damn to see, your eyes. If not, I would love to see either a new Advance Wars title or Microsoft to get Rare to make a new Blast Core title. Ooh, that's a good one. Hmm. For me, I would love 
for uh, Capcom to basically uh, do something new uh, in the style of Dragon's Dogma. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. I, I must admit, when you said Capcom used to make another style of it, I was just like, he's going to say Orkami, isn't he? Nah, I got you there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Dragon's Dogma is weird because when it first came out, nobody liked it, but it was one of those ones where over time it got really popular. It's kind of like um, the original Nier, where originally it was absolutely hated by all the critics, yeah. but like it got a really uh, yeah, big as fandom. Soon, as soon as Nier Automata came out, everybody suddenly... The price of the PS3 version of Nier just went through the roof because Nier Automata was such a good game. But yeah, Dragon's something in the style of Dragon's Dogma. I don't mean Dragon's Dogma, a new Dragon's Dogma game. Something maybe set in that world in the past or the future of that world that links in with Dragon's Dogma, that sort of thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because they created a magnificent world for that, and I had some amazing games just playing Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, which is the best version of Dragon's Dogma to play, by the way. Because it's the complete Dragon's Dogma, isn't it? Yeah, it's that plus all the DLC, isn't it? Yeah. What else? What else? What else? See, I don't have my game shelf with me here. If I had my game shelf with me... (gasps) (laughs) Do you know what I would love for them to do? I would love for them to do this. It's not Golden Sun, it's the other one. I would love a new Golden Sun, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, the uh, thing is, uh, it's not Golden Sun, I'd love a new Breath of Fire game. Oh, I would love a new one. I mean, uh, it, after five, and I know six is a thing, but new Dot Hack, that would be a fun one. There is actually a new Dot Hack game. Is there? That, it? Came, that yeah. came out uh, a while ago. Uh, right, okay, uh, I've got uh, an interesting one, right? Interesting uh, one that I think might actually work. And uh, this one was an odd one from Bioware that came out on the Xbox and on the PC. And Mm -hmm. I would love to see them give this a try. I'd love to see them do this as like an MMORPG. In fact, I would love to see a Jade Empire MMORPG. Oh, that would be a good one. Yeah. See, I I love how we went for like proper nostalgic ones. So now I'm kind of thinking... In order for them to make any of these work, they would have to re-release the original ones as well, wouldn't they? Well, you know, it's not that long ago for Jade Empire. But the thing is, Jade Empire was basically a martial arts RPG in the way that Shenmue was. And I'm thinking, with Shenmue 3 coming out at some point, if I was Bioware, I'd definitely be looking into, especially with the rise of games like... uh, Black Desert Online and Revelations uh, Online and stuff like that. Stuff that's mm-hmm. coming over from Korea and China with those MMOs that are very much based in kind of uh, Eastern cultivation mythology, you know, the uh, Zhang Zhe and the Zhang Huan uh, novels and stories, you know, things like Flying Swords and stuff like that, right? With all those coming across, why not do something that's firmly centered on martial arts? Exactly. It'll be a nice change of pace from what we're normally getting. Exactly. And if you can't do that, then I demand, I absolutely demand that somebody, somewhere, somehow, does me a new Dark Cloud game. Yes. That one, I I mean, we've got Dark Cloud, we've got Dark Cloud 2. Dark Chronicle. Dark Chronicle. Which was a superb game. Which was, and we haven't had anything since. Now, I haven't played much of it, but I'm sure that the new Nino Kuni game actually has a lot of stuff that fits in with Dark Cloud. Yeah. So, but yeah, a new Dark Cloud game would just be fantastic. See? See, I can choose games as well. <laughs> I like how we're just like, we can choose games, like, but they're nearly all GRPGs. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's your lot for uh, this time round. Uh, we'll see you all on our next show, which is going to be all about E3, because it will be after E3, so uh, it will be our roundup of E3. Uh, so look forward to it. Until then, uh, I have been Rob. And I've been Mark. And we'll see you all later. Bye! Bye!